Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here, and welcome to episode number 50 of my Bath City Lower League Management Football Manager 2015 Let's Play. And today, first game we're going to be playing in League 2. It's fitting uh, to be episode 50 as well. It's a big time in this career now because we can really push on. Uh, we're in the Football League, we're going to be playing FA Cup games, Capital One Cup, all of that. Uh, J Paint Trophy, John Sosa Paint Trophy is all just heaps of stuff going to be happening now. And yeah, we're this is where we're able to get better talents now because we're, of course, there's still a lot of players that didn't want to join us. I'm going to go through that a lot. The players we did sign, it was a real struggle. Like I mentioned in the previous episode, I'm pretty sure I said I, I, I spent more time than expected, to be honest. All last night for me, about well, at least three or four hours, I was trying to yeah find players and and also a couple hours this morning. So that's about five or six hours. Some people wanted me to record that, but yeah, not it's like not possible. And I'd just like to sit back and chill, listen to some music and just yeah, go through my methods of signing or just finding the players. But so many didn't want to join. And like I said, I'll go through that a bit later. But now these are the players. I won't go through their profiles. You know how good they were. Frankie Artis, Andy Gallina, he was the captain. Uh, Charlie Ward, JPS and David Pratt. They, some of them were really good players for us, but this is League 2. This is a higher level, so we needed to let them go. I suppose we could have almost kept a few because some of the guys I signed, they're on a lot more wages. You know, I did have that about 10k extra that was given to me by the board, and I was able to sign a few more, but yeah, I'll go through those now. Some big signings. You know, Harold Ratchnig, I made the deal for him to sign late last season. Um, a region coming through and he's finally joined. He's got the high potential. He doesn't say exactly, but it should be around Championship or Premier League. Yeah, once, yeah, Leah Lamb, the assistant manager, it takes a while uh, when new players join to actually get a gauge of what their potential is, like what level. Uh, that's what I've experienced. But our first official signing, I guess we made after that, Joshua Emmanuel on a free transfer. He is a right back. Again, you know, right back is a position uh, I struggled I struggled to find someone really good there. And, of course, we still have Sakani Simpson because uh, he had a contract. I haven't really released players that were on a contract already. Like, I'm just going to keep it, uh, keep players for squad depth. They're going to like guys like Sakani Simpson I kept. But Joshua Manuel, he could play centre-back if needed as well, but he's a right-back. He came through Ipswich, uh, the youth academy there. Uh, his potential is pretty high as well, that minimum of four-star well, th with this skin, it's four circles, but I'll just call it four star because that's what it is generally. But yes, uh, he's pretty good. Like his dribbler, he's a guy that gets forward, obviously, but he's good defensively. Uh, it's really hard. Our best right back is <laughs> like if we don't have a natural right back, that is amazing. That's our problem. I couldn't find someone uh, that was good enough that wanted to join. It was a real struggle because uh, they were saying like the. They don't want to join Bath because their reputation is not high enough, like their stature in football or something is not high enough. So it was a re yeah, it was a real struggle to get yeah quality, experienced players. A lot of the ones I got were younger types uh, because of that reason. But the next guy, Nicola Vecchio, a bit out of the ordinary signing, a bit of left field, out of left field signing from Udinese. Um, he was out of his contract of course I didn't sign them from him uh, they let him go but I was able to find him and pick him up again you can notice the high heading marking and tackling uh, those are the kind of positions or attributes I look for for the position of center back and also positioning and anticipation is really good as well the only downside was his jumping reach but I had to jump on him because his high potential as well uh, you don't really know it could be up to championship or even Premier League he came through like Serie A, like Udinese, like that's pretty good, pretty good level. So we've got to see how good he'll be. Uh, he's pretty quick as well for a centre back, 12 pace, 11 acceleration. He's aggressive as well. But as I said, the downside is he's not that good in the air and he's pretty small as a centre back. But the centre back was another position. Defenders were so hard to find. Uh, and the, like, the, like all the experienced guys that I found on a free transfer that were let go from League One or League Two sides last season, they didn't want to join me. They said, yeah, Bath's reputation is not high enough, so there's not much I could do about that. That's the thing, just being a newly promoted team. They don't want to join you because you know there's a good chance you're going to get relegated. But again, we'll move on. Another youngster, Ben Sheaf. I'm getting a few youngsters, like I mentioned. But yeah, that's the thing. 
uh, that's uh, people I want to get experience. That's thing I wanted to get experience in, but there's no one I could have find that was actually good enough. So I felt if there's a older guy and a younger guy, that's basically the same ability. You want to go for the younger guy because he's only going to get better. Like this lad, uh, where did he come through? Um, origi originally from West Ham, but then moved to Arsenal for a couple seasons. And we'll check out his report here again. It's that minimum of four stars and maximum of five. Uh, apparently, he'll only be a decent player for Vanarama North or South Sides, but I looked at him and attribute-wise, I, I couldn't see anyone better. That's the thing is, he'll be a really good deep playing playmaker. He's got the first touch, passing, technique, uh, vision, work rate, teamwork, and decisions. I like all those attributes for like a deep playing playmaker. And, he, and coming through Arsenal, of course, will be definitely a good passing player. That's how they they that's how they play. So that's how they're going to teach their young players to play, and at least or at least have their youth squad with those kind of players, the midfielders. Uh, and next up, we've got another hyphen player. who actually got two in <laughs> to replace JPS, uh, but Isaac Christie Davis. He is a center midfielder. He can play attacking mid and defensive midfield, but natural in the center mid. Uh, you look at his technicals and mentals, they're pretty poor, of course, but then he's got physical ability. He's pretty quick with tail pace and 12 strength. So, And he came through Chelsea as well. Look at that. So he must have decent potential... Not saying that, yeah, if you come through a top team, you're going to have high, high potential, but it must be okay. It's not going to be, like, not even good enough for League 2. It's probably a bit higher than that. Maybe League 1 Championship, uh, we still have to see that as he grows. And, yeah, he's just two-star ability, current ability for 18-year-olds. Uh, looks pretty good. What are we training him on right now? Yeah, just on the halfback role. I'm looking to mold him into that defensive midfield uh, kind of player because, yeah, he is strong, and we can develop his defensive attributes, hopefully. Yeah, I don't know if he'd be a more creative type as a centre mid, or I could mould him to be a bit more defensive because of his strength. And he's pretty tall, 188 centimetres. Got a contract to 2019 as well. Next up, Charlie Oliver. He is an ex-Man City youth player. He starts like his first season this year in Football Manager 15. Uh, that's where he starts. And again, high potential. He comes in as our second best rated centre back. And the other guy, George Fowler, is actually a low knee. I'll talk about that as well. Uh, when he comes around, 900 pounds per week. Again, he's one that's really balanced technically and physically. He's got the heading, the marking, and tackling. Uh, then some leadership. He could be a future captain of the club. Uh, he's got positioning. That's important. And then, yeah, strength is 11, stamina 11, pace 11, jumping reach 11, acceleration 11. All those 11 are important like, for a good physical center back, especially as he's not super tall. He's like 184 centimeters. Uh, but like I said, jumping reach is decent and heading. So I can, I believe he'll develop into an okay player. Like all these players I'm signing, you see decent player for the Vanarama Conference or something like that. And we're in the league above that. So, but I think they're better rated than that. Like, well, at least these were the best ones that wanted to come to me. So I want you to understand that as well. I couldn't get anyone else better. There was experienced guys, but they were similarly rated. Like um, there was a guy like him, but he was about 29 or 30 but he's not going to be getting better. He's only going to be getting worse. And it just makes sense with a guy with potential to help because I feel like it's going to be a struggle to get promoted, right, from League Two. Somehow we did consecutively uh, from the Vanarama Conference, but this is a new level. This is a much higher level. So I think if we're going to just try and escape relegation, maybe finish mid-table, whatever, for a few seasons, and yeah, we can develop these young guys and in a few seasons we'll be prime for promotion. That's... That's my logic and the way I want to go with it anyway. Um, Kingsley James. Uh, this guy, I got him because of his physical ability and mental ability, uh, which I feel is very important at this level. But now we're pushing up to a high level, not just lower leagues. We're in League 2 now. Uh, again, physical, 186 centimeters. He's probably another box-to-box -box midfield type, so I can rotate with Ben Adelsbury. Of course, Adelsbury is a different kind of player who's going to yeah score from long shots, free kicks, you know, Adelsbury's deal. Uh, but yeah, he's decent passing, then decent tackling. So yeah, I think he could be a mix between both, like a defensive player and attacking player. So box to box midfielder uh, is his best role, um, I think. Uh, but again, we'll play with deep line playmaker. His vision's nine and passing ten. So we've got to see. Uh, but yeah, to me, box to box is his best role. Now next up, important signing for us. So all of these guys, they were on the cheaper kind of the more affordable scale like these guys wanted to join i just want to let you know how i signed these players so you can understand a bit uh, get you the understanding all these players up until Tariq holmes holmes dennis they all wanted to listen like you know how you offer a contract and they want to listen and not they yeah rejected or whatever or you have to talk to them 
from all these signings, of course, apart from the loan, the last three signings, um, you know how it says like they don't want to join um, because of their reputation or something, and you can either talk to them or offer them a contract, but and they say, yeah, you need to offer me a big contract. So you'll see that with the next guy. So uh, Tariq, Holmes, Dennis, you can see a bit more like 1.8K wages, but we did have that. You know, we got that 10K. So I was able to spend it. I just wanted to make sure I get those cheap signings in the right places. And these big guys, they had to be the best. They had to be the best available. And he comes in. I didn't sign him because he was a left back. I signed him because he had really strong attributes all over the park and he can play a few positions in our formation. He can play left back, defensive mid, center mid, and right back. And maybe center back if needed, but I probably won't play him there because he's weak in the air and not really tall. He's just going to be a guy that's going to play most games and if not, he's going to at least be on the bench. He can come on and play whatever role that is needed. He's determined as well, leadership 12, maybe a future captain as well. You see his report. He's a decent player for League Two side. So yeah, he's, he's one of the very few who can play at this level and he's been on loan at this level the last two seasons and he's actually played games for Charlton in the championship came off the bench all the time yeah yeah he's never started for them but he's played games at that level so he's got in a bit of experience there and yeah last two seasons he's been on loan at AFC Wimbledon that was the first season actually when they got relegated so I'm not sure if that's a good sign but obviously he's improved since then because he would have been 18 and 19 and now he's 20 and he's going to turn he's going to turn 21 so He's, he's a good player for us. What are we working on with him? It's something. Yeah, it's marking. Yeah, marking. Uh, his position, oh, I don't know, because we've got two left backs uh, or two other left backs. I wasn't sure what position to actually work on with him. And he's left foot only. So I ideally don't want to play him at right back, but he could be our best option at right back. If we go here, right back, oh, he's equal with the other one. So leave your thoughts on what position I should train him because he's going to be an important player for us. And this is what I mean about trying to maybe survive in the division for two seasons or something. When he gets 22, 23, if we haven't been promoted yet, these kind of players are going to be yeah in the prime position to do so. Um, yeah, but if you what position, what position to work on, leave in your comments because I'm not sure about that yet because, of course, we do have two other left backs. And if they're starting, yeah, he wouldn't be. I'll look at another position. But... We had to get a striker, and the last two are strikers. Of course, all my other signings haven't been. And you see, we let go of Pratt, JPS. That's two, and we had a couple loanies. Loanies. Uh, Ross Lafayette. I think that's how you say his name. He's one of the few experienced guys I got through uh, because of his mental ability. If he didn't have as high mentals, there was a few other older guys that didn't have that mental ability. And there was, like, younger players that were rated similarly to him, like, you know, with similar attributes, but I just feel, because we're going to be playing with a target man now, the deep lying forward is going to be a target man on support, because obviously, uh, maybe have another option pushing uh, pushing closer to midfield, uh, that's what I want from him anyway, and plus his experience last two seasons, hasn't played too much games uh, for Luton, or didn't play too much games uh, for Luton in that time, but he still was a League 2 player. Those are the kind of players I had to bring in because I have very few of those. I still have, yeah, he actually uh, built himself up, which was pretty good. He, like, dominated for Welling. Uh, Vanarama South scored 20 goals. Next level, scored 16 goals. Yeah, next season when they got promoted, 16. So that was in real life, of course. So that was the season before. Yeah, like, the game was made. So they saw that. Yeah, he's decently rated. Uh, so, he's a stronger type. He's going to be one of those target men. 188 centimeters, decent strength and aggression, heading, jumping reach, and he can finish. And some strong mentors as well, work rate and teamwork wise. So, so yeah, he's a, a class target man. And I feel when you're a lower team and low expectations, uh, yeah, you're going to need a target man, I feel. Uh, unfortunately, he's got a little injury. He almost... He's almost back for it. He got it a couple of weeks ago in between one and three days. So he's going to miss the first game, but we have a Capital One Cup game three uh, three days later. So he might make it for that. But next up, a guy I'm excited about, a young striker uh, who I played against last season at some points, Tyler Walker. Last season, he was on loan at AFC Wimbledon. He scored 10 goals in the league. He's think 10 out of 28 games, uh, 25 starts in the league. It's not that impressive, but last season, well, he would have been, well, still 19. He turns uh, 20, uh, not too far away, but um, yeah, like I said, he performed well. His average rating was over a 7, 
so he must be playing well. Like, his passing's decent for a striker at this level as well. His passing technique, so he maybe he can create as well, but ideally, I wanted to sign him. When I went to look for that signing, I wanted a poacher, and he was going to be that type. So he's pretty quick, uh, good finishing off the ball and training him on the poacher role so he can improve some of these weaker areas of his game. And that was pretty much it with him. And also, I just want to, like I said, with the good performances, he played one game in the championship. We came off the bench... <laughs> for Nottingham Forest in the league and in the cup. So two times he came off the bench for Nottingham Forest, who were in the championship, to score a goal twice. So that wasn't luck. That's You know he's got ability. So obviously after that, AFC Wimbledon wanted to get him on loan. But hopefully he can step up now. What's his potential? Again, it doesn't say, but then he's got that minimum of four stars. So he's going to be an all right player and decent for this level. And the final one was a loan for George Fowler. I don't want to rely on loans too much. I want to, like I said, if we're going to look to, we've got to be realistic. I said this last season, we weren't going to get promoted, but it's even harder. We might, yeah, lose some games badly. We've got to, I've got to play like every game is in the playoffs. Like a lot of you guys or some of you guys anyway were saying, um, I really managed well, um, like as a manager, tactically. That's the thing. I can't just play the games. That's what I've been doing up until now in the leagues, at least, uh, first two seasons, just playing the games and not, um, in those playoff games, I treated them like they were as playoffs. I'm I'm not going to get promoted if I don't win them. I've got to be a really good manager in all of the games. But George Fowler, he'll come in as a lone player, and he's our best-rated centre-back. He's actually got Premier League potential, uh, so maybe we can sign him in the future. But there was a few players like Alex Penny who I wanted to sign. Yeah, that's, for example, just to give you one example, Alex Penny, who we had on loan last season towards the end, he didn't want to join. He said, yeah, Bath, it's not... It's not a good enough level for me. So, what can you do? <laughs> uh, but George Fowler on loan from Ipswich. He played three games in the championship last season. Was that? No, yeah, it was just off the bench. But he was making the bench for them at the very least. But that's not surprising if he has decent Premier League potential. Uh, but yes, I don't think if I need any more transfers, of course, we can make loans at any time. Again, I asked the board for a senior affiliate. But they just... M my chairman, Amanda Rigby or whatever her name is, she just doesn't doesn't want it to give it to us. I don't, I don't know why. I've tried every single season, multiple times. Uh, good news, uh, we've got a stadium expansion that went through, I think it was uh, towards the end of last season or the start of this season. I can't remember in the preseason or whatever, but very early in the preseason, I can say that. But if we go to the club and we go facilities, um, this is the situation. This is our capacity right now. 8,840 and 2,000 seated. So I'm not sure if I showed that. I might have showed it like right at the start or at some point I would have. So you can check that out to compare it. We still are very basic training. so And that's hard because uh, what I did didn't go the way I planned. Um, my balance is in the red now, 142K. I organized home friendlies. Uh, there was one away one against Bristol Rovers. But I organized all home friendlies so I can get like the home ticket sales and all of that. Uh, the gate receipts and all like Premier League teams. Like I said, apart from Bristol City. And yeah, I thought that was, we we're going to get money. And I did notice, but we had to pay them. But you know, you know how I explained it? The, like say, just for example, Aston Villa, I think we paid 80K, but then we were due to get 110K back. So, and that was the same with a lot of them. Like Leicester, we paid 45K or something like that. We were predicted to get 75K back, like a 30K profit. But it doesn't really look like we've gotten that. So... But I've got to say, this is the first time ever I've done this in Football Manager. Ever since I started, <laughs> pretty much, back in the day, FMO6, or whenever, yeah, FMO6, FMO7, that's when I played it, the first time ever. I just asked my assistant <laughs> to do the to a, lot, a lot of things, not just the friendlies, but a lot of things, then I've just always done that, you know? Uh, but yeah, and for them not to offer contracts to my staff or just whatever, uh, whatever way. Um, and I'm sure you're the same with some things as well. So that led us to lose a lot of friendlies, but the morale isn't too low. It's just, but we did play a lot of games. I'm just, I thought in my head when I set them up, I'm like, oh, we're going to make a lot of profit here. I, th I even calculated it around 300k, um, but it didn't pan out that way. I'm pretty sure I calculated right. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah, because we paid some signings, we... We paid sign-on fees, so that could have, yeah, led to that. But anyway, uh, from here on out, I'm probably not going to do that again. I'm just going to leave it to my assistant because, yeah, or just do away ones. Do away ones uh, for the following season, and we'll see how that goes. Because, yeah, away friendlies, you don't pay more. I just thought, 
uh, when I calculate it. If I do the home games, I'm going to get a bit more money back than the away ones. But it's all about testing. It's football manager. It's there's no right and wrong. Um, you just yeah play the way you, uh, yeah you think is right and you learn from your mistakes and that's what I've always done and uh, it's gotten me to yeah consecutive promotions now like for example in FM fourteen I didn't get promoted like, until like four seasons even though yeah I lost on penalties that was shocking uh, but it's gotten to me to the stage now in FM fifteen where I've got yeah consecutive promotions so it all works out that way so. We'll just move on anyway from that. Hopefully, we can go on cup runs because, yeah, we're in Capital One Cup now and uh, FA Cup. We're going to be playing against bigger teams because we are in League Two. So, but it's going to be hard to win, of course. But who knows? Maybe with a bit of luck, we could. So, this is the team I'm going to be going in with the first game or for the first game. And you can see I've still got some players we had last season, like Chris McPhee. He's just going down so much right now. I'm trying to mold him into a, a centre mid, actually. If we go to development. And we'll go training. Yes, I'm working on strength and the centimeter. Like, I feel we might as well just keep him because he's got experience. He's got very low attributes, though, but there's no harm in just keeping him because he may get injuries. He can play a lot of positions. He can be just a bit part player if we need him. That's what his situation is going to be. I don't want to be playing him, ideally. And then you got Dan Hart as well, Curtis DaCosta. Eh, I'm not really... I might have to send him out on loan, honestly. Uh, still got very low potential. Only, like, well, yeah, low ability. Then potential is only good to be Vanarama Conference. And I signed him, yeah, 2018. I thought his, yeah, potential was at least League Two. I remember seeing that when I signed him, but because he was a big injury or had a big injury last season, that affected that. Uh, so maybe, yeah. Do you think I should send him out on loan? He's on 925 per week, and yeah, a lot of players got increased their wages. You know, just in the clauses uh, because you get promoted and just the yearly increase for some players i might actually list him for on loan because you've got to think what center backs do we have we've got roy sheridan who's a youngster as well uh we got ratchnig he's got good potential and then we got george fowl on loan we still need those numbers because we could get a big injury so i don't want to commit to letting him go out on loan but yes i'll just show you the rest of stuff we have done here set pieces we don't have many good corner takers or free kick takers. Of course, Adelsbury, because of his power, so he's going to be up there, but it's not really highly rated. And then our captains, uh, McPhee's actually the captain because he's been he's got the highest leadership and he's been here since last season. Dan Hart as well, because he's been here since last season. Then, yeah, I just put the stand-ins, uh, which have the next highest leadership, like uh, Holmes Dennis, uh, Ross Lafayette, and Kingsley James. They're, of course, going to be players that weren't here last season because... It's a big turnover at this level. And I always get excited at this level. Like, when you're Premier League, you don't make this many changes. Most of the time, anyway. Uh, but this one, because you make free transfers, you let players go. Uh, that's the situation. So that's it. Uh, hopefully, oh man, it's Cambridge, yeah? I just want to show you the fixtures, yeah. Today, we have Cambridge. Is it? it came, I think it's Cambridge. Yeah, Cambridge. We're playing Cambridge at home. And, of course, we're predicted to come last again. We're playing against a team that's 19th uh, media prediction. So, we've got a chance to win this game. If things go our way, we have a chance to win this. Uh, but then, three days later, we have a game against Bournemouth. Uh, of course, they're in the championship. So, and they're predicted to come 8th. Uh, a bit higher than mid-table. So, we, realistically, we might get knocked out. And, of course, the final signing uh, we agreed on is a 16-year-old, uh, Ronan Griff. Uh, from Israel, uh, and he's not going to be joining until he turns 18. Of course, some countries have that. And yeah, I just, uh, with these situations, especially at a lower level, and when they're from another country as well, I like to make the story in my head. They're just studying. Like they want to finish school before they come over um, to a club in a new country, of course, come over to uh, England and uh, play for a professional club now, League Two football. So that's a kind of, uh, I'm not sure if anyone else has stories like that you kind of put to make it seem a bit more realistic for yourself, but he's a guy that looks like a really good player. Of course, I couldn't get a scarab put on him, but I saw him only 16. He's got good determination and yeah, like he's pretty much the same rated <laughs> as our other center back. So hopefully he has some decent potential as well. But like I said, I'll just put that story in my head that he wants to finish, finish off school first and then he can play some football. Uh, for us, uh, yeah, for, that all goes to plan, so uh, that's how that panned out, so hopefully in the first game, we can get a victory. Okay, lads, you can see the first game of the season uh, was officially played uh, Crew v Bradford, and they played out a 1-1 draw, 
I would love to get a win here. Cambridge, do they have any injuries? I always like to check this out to obviously gauge my chances during the game. They only have one injury. Of course, I'm not going to analyze the whole team. It's just the region. But you can't say, yeah, just the region. They may be a good player. Like, we have a few good regions in our team. So, and also on our new superstar, um, Andreas, um, someone actually told me uh, they were from Cyprus and you don't pronounce the C in his name. It's just Haralabus. So I'm going to pronounce it that way uh, from now on because, yeah, obviously if someone from, uh, well, at least, I'm not sure if they live there in Cyprus, but at least their parents or something's from there, uh, a bit more knowledge than me. So I'm going to call him that for now, just Haralabus. Uh, makes me feel a bit weird if that's not how you pronounce it, uh, like the first time I did. But anyway, we'll move on. And, oh, his determination is going up. And, yes, he is getting tutored by someone, isn't he? Where are we? Information. No, it's development, isn't it? Yeah, uh, he's being tutored by Ross Lafayette, whose determination is 15. So it would be lovely if we could get up to that. But, yes, Harry Labus hopefully can be a, yeah, a player that just keeps developing for us. Of course, he's not. He's a good player for Vanarama Conference. He showed that last season. Uh, so he's going to be a player this season for us. But Ashley Fletcher and Tyler Walker are going to be stepping up to the plate for today's game. Unfortunately, Ross Lafayette is not going to play. But yeah, this is the team. This is the team. I'm pumped. Imagine if we can kick off with a win. That will be insane. It's going to be hard, of course. We've got a few legends still here. Simon Locke, Zakani Simpson, Dan Ball. So even though the, and Ben Addersbury as well, Dan Demkiv, uh, players that played in previous seasons, they may not be this level, but they play for the badge, you know. They play for the badge and they want to do well and they, they're not going to embarrass themselves. I'm, I'll be confident in that. So like a lot of times this season, we're going to be playing defensively on our defensive tactic. Well, it's not that defensive, it's just... Yeah, the roles aren't changed, as you know. It's just, yeah, playing a more defensive mentality and a slower build-up opposed to, like, direct and higher tempo. We're playing more of a lower tempo, short passing, all that stuff. Oh, come on. Let's go in. We have to give a squad number to George Fowler, actually. We'll give him number 11? Nah. Yeah, we'll give him, like, a, just a higher one, like 15 or something like that. Come on. Lads. Like, if I get a win in the first game here, it will make me believe we probably could get promotion. And this is different. It's finally different. This is... I believe this is right. The top three get automatic promotion, yeah? And then from fourth to seventh is the playoffs. So that gives you more of a chance to get promoted <laughs> than, yeah, uh, the previous divisions. So if you have a good season, who knows? The impossible could be possible. So just show this. We've still got... Of course, Leah Lamb, so he can do our team talks again. The original ones, and they're not too amazing, so I'll go do my one passionately, and I have faith in you. I'm not sure if it's boring if I do the same ones all the time, but as long as it gets those good reactions, well, I'm going to keep doing it. There we go. I have faith in you. Strikers. Come on. Click. There you go. Passionate. I have faith in you. Only the strikers, yeah. None of the strikers got a good reaction, but still listening keenly. That is not a bad reaction. So we'll. This is home game, so this is will fit for our pitch. Oh man, we're underway here. On the ball early. This is a good thing. Ball to Demkiv, back to ball. Oh, imagine if he could score ball. Oh my God, what an effort! I'm sure he didn't mean that. It wasn't a shot. It was a cross, a dangerous one. And look at this possession we're keeping early. It's a decent start, a very good start. First 10 minutes, look at that. Over 70% possession. This is a good start. Adelsbury, Tyler Walker, Demkiv. Oh, gave it away. But one of their center backs already has a yellow in the first 10 minutes. It's very, very dangerous for them. Now, Vecchio, he's Italian defender, so... Italians are normally good defenders. That's another reason I got him in. So, Adelsbury. This is really good passing. Come on. Walker. Walker. What is he going to do? Adelsbury! <laughs> oh, yes. He's carrying the form into the next season. And it's only fitting for him to score our first goal in a new division in League 2. Ben Adelsbury. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, man. His shots are amazing. I've never had a midfielder that... Like, a center mid that scores this consistently, like, from long shots and, like, free kicks and penalties. And he just smashed that. Come on. What a start, Bath. Who knows? I don't want to get too excited. It's only the first game. But, wow. Good goal. 
Oh, no, they've got a free kick, though. Donaldson! That's very frustrating, but it was a good strike. you got to give it to him, but... Yeah, I think concede by a set piece. We shouldn't be giving away those fouls. I'd like to see how that yeah, came to be. Like, was it a free kick? A uh, lock? Maybe he could have done better. It was straight at him. It was just in an awkward height, or at an awkward height. But, uh... <laughs> it's it's frustrating to take those goals. It was the only shot on target as well. But I've got to be happy uh, the way we played in the first half. The performance has been excellent. So I'll say that most definitely. Passionately, I'm happy with the performance. I don't get that. I don't get that reaction. Because we're a team that's expected to come last. But anyway. I'll just say I have faith in you. Passionately, I'm very happy. You know. <laughs> Just all these different feelings going in my head right now, or thoughts. Because we had the lead. But I guess, especially at home, avoiding defeat in the first game is so important. And as I say that, they might have a chance. Come on, you've got to deal with this. Well done. Well done. Come on, Locke. Fletcher, win this header. Demkiv. Adelsbury. Come on, Adelsbury. You've got to pick your passes better than that. And hit them better. Oh, the possession's not good here. We're giving it away a lot. Tackle them. They've got space. Oh, he should have intercepted that. Christy Davies. Christy is a fucking girl's name. Fuck, man. What the hell? What is that? Tackle him. Not a great start. We st Well, we started so well. Oh, no. We got us. I got to say something calmly. Encourage. This is not the start I had planned. I thought, yeah, we had. We're winning. We're one nil. What happened? What happened? Oh, lads. Tyler Walker. Uh, we're gonna have to bring on Harold Labus here. We need some of his magic. Uh, I think Lee Palmer as well for Demkiv. And we'll make just the two changes for now. And we'll probably change to attacking formation. There we go. To change it up a little bit. And even the deep line playmaker on defend will just push up to a support. To be slightly more attacking in that role. Holmes Dennis. Uh, we'll go assertively. No pressure on Haralabis. Or oh, maybe overly so. But anyway, <laughs> Lee Palmer will say I have faith in you. He looks happy. Come on. Just try and get a goal. A point would be okay. We've got to pick up points. That, that's for sure. So we don't get relegated. That's the biggest fear. We've got to be picking up points. Oh, that's a red. That's a red. We could go like show attacking here and try and win it. Yeah? He's gone. Brindley, come on. We have to go so attacking right now. Because we, we have to take advantage. We've got extra man. We'll go play fluidly. Uh, we'll go overload. Uh, fullbacks can go to wingbacks on attack. This has to work, surely. We're going to have an extra man for like, 25 minutes. Uh, plus extra time, come on. They'll be on attacking. Um, Chrissy Davis, could we put like three center mids? Yeah, we should do. We should do. Just put him there. Chrissy Davis, what's his best role? Can you just play like as a center mid? Yeah, I'll put him like... Or advanced playmaker. Uh, we've already got Palmer there. But if I change Palmer to maybe attacking midfielder on attack, because I don't like, I just don't like having the same roles for whatever reason, and I'll put him advanced playmaker and support. Uh, we'll see if this is going to get the job done. Uh, you got target men on attack there. I think on the defend one's on support, but anyway. Who? What are we going to do? Yeah, one more change. The player coming on, Dan Ball, to come off because Anthony Robinson is probably a better, like, wing-back kind of type. Quick, can get forward. Whew. This is it, lads. We have a chance. I'll be disappointed if we don't get at least a draw here. I'll be disappointed, but I'll be hoping we can get a goal maybe at least before the 80th minute. Imagine if we score it here. It's not too often you will when a red card is given, as that's the highlight. But it's really, it's disappointing to see they had two shots on target and both of them were goals. But sometimes that happens. 
and now we're just waiting to see. Oh, man. It hasn't been a poor performance at all. Adelsbury puts it in. Vecchio. Uh, we win the corner kick at the least. And who's this? Uh, Christy Davis. Come on. You need to do much better. You need to do something. Because that interception that you didn't make before, it was costly. Uh, maybe we need uh, team talk as well. Passionately. Show some passion. Come on. Need a goal before 80 minutes if we're going to win this. Okay, the chance here. <laughs> if we score from this chance, there'll be plenty of time. Fletcher, go Palmer. Simpson, we want to win this. We want to win this, Haralabas. Come on. Come on. Wow, and what an assist as well. Sakani Simpson. I was a bit yeah shaky about him. Of course, he already had a contract, so we weren't going to let him go. Uh, but he comes up with assist. That's a perfect ball. And how the goalkeeper was positioned there. Harold Abbas was going to score that every day of the week. Oh, no. They've got a corner now. Defend this. Defend. No. Oh, good defending. Well done. Well done. Oh, they've got another one. Don't keep giving <laughs> them corners. Like until they score or something. Oh, it's Doninger. It's Lanzoni. To Brown. With an E. Okay, Simpson. Boots it forward. <laughs> oh, you got to do better there. You got to do better. Now they're everywhere. That's oh, oh my god. Yeah, I thought that was offside, but oh man, crazy game. We're just continuing off the playoff games, yeah. Uh, Davies is getting more into the game. He's doing well here. Fletcher. Oh, look at this space for Robinson. Come on, come on, Haralabas. Come on, we can win the first game here. Come on. This guy is a dead set superstar, though. Andreas Haralabas. Whoo, three two. And we're gonna get it. We're gonna keep attacking. We're playing amazing here. We're playing amazing. Maybe I should actually create this tactic. I have. I'm gonna save this actually uh, for future reference. You can from here, yeah. And they go in some kind of fire. If you go save, um, Bar City attacking here. There you go. No, no. I want to save it as something else because we already have Bar City attacking. Um, Bar City, extra, <laughs> extra attacking, yeah? And you can see I've just got all other tactics there. And that will be saved in the settings. Then I'll add it a bit later. Cool. That's what I did with my defensive tactic um, last season in one game. I went, I was winning and then I think I was winning by a goal. Then I scored a couple more. <laughs> so I was impressed with that. Yeah, we could defend and score a couple. Oh, but come on, don't concede. no. Oh, that's not fair. Like, uh, there was just all this build up, and then they just score like that. It feels. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't fit the story, you know? Uh, uh, that feels that feels a bit wrong for me. But anyway, we'll. I've got to accept it. It just. Uh, it's so disappointing to concede that. Come on, maybe one more chance. Come on. Oh, they've got a late set piece. At least we'll pick up a point. But this doesn't feel like that was supposed to happen, yeah? I don't know. Maybe just because my... Yeah, the way I was reacting to it and stuff, like, uh, I made it more like we deserve to win the game. But, yeah, it kind of feels wrong that we dropped it late there. But I'll say... Okay, they got mad when I said I was happy. So I'll say I'm far from pleased. Okay, they're happy when I say they played crap pretty much. So... Uh, of course, I'm happy with uh, Haralabas, how he played, scored the two goals coming on. Probably will vie for a starting position in the next game. Uh, but with 59% possession, and we really dominated late, and we scored that late goal, uh, to me, uh, we deserve the three points. So this is going to be it for this episode. And I'm not going to play another game of this episode, but I'm going to just, after this, I'm going to record the next two, and I'm going to see how you guys like it. Because i got two promotions... Maybe I could go back to doing live games now. Leave your thoughts. Especially if they're going to be exciting like this. I know yeah, I'm going to be dropping a lot of points. So I may get frustrated. And I don't want to get too frustrated. If, and if I notice in games, yeah, I'm starting to lose. And yeah, my yeah frustrations get a bit too over top. I, yeah, I think I'll just go back and yeah play a bit more games off camera. Because I still want my videos to be professional. You know, a bit like I don't want to yeah be like complaining too much about the game. And if I notice, yeah, I'm doing that. I won't. So that's why I want to win games. Like when I got that, yeah, it looked to be the winning goal. I was so excited, but then so disappointing uh, when we conceded. Maybe I should have went 
a bit more defensive and I'm sure yeah some people will say that you should have but that's it's easy to do like uh when you're sitting back and watching a video but when you're playing the game it goes by so quickly and we were looking amazing on attack I really couldn't see them scoring with a less man but that's football anyway hopefully you enjoyed it leave your thoughts on my signings leave your thoughts on the game where do you think we can finish this season I'll be hoping for a safe being realistic a safe mid-table position I reckon and giving these youngsters a time to flourish and if you've got uh, Harold Abbas scoring, he almost looks like our best player and our youngest. I think he's one of our youngest anyway. But that's it for now. Drop a like on the video. I'll record the next two games and leave your comments in that video if you like that. And I'll see you guys next time.